So let's move on to content directions. Um, content directions is probably what most people consider or, or think about when it's uh, when we talk about interactions in Moodle. And what we will focus on in this chapter is how to integrate H5P in a better way than how you would usually do that or how I usually see it in most Moodle sites. And we do that using our content designer activity, which is a, let's say, a, a, a small uh, minimalistic authoring solution for a Moodle course. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of examples, how it can look, how it's used, and then I'm going to explain how to create those content design activities and uh, share some best practices for that. So if we look at the course here, let's move to the content interactions section here. I have a couple of content designer activities. So, so these three here are content designer activities. And if you open one, you see a, a very simple um, first example. You see a heading, some text, subheading, some more text. And down here, um, I'm sure you recognize it, there's, there's an H5P, an accordion, and um, uh, sorry, not an accordion, a summary. So I can uh, click on something um, and hopefully I managed to complete it successfully. Yes, I did that. You get the interaction feedback and then you can mark this as done. And that would be the very simple content nugget uh, that, that has been implemented using Content Designer. Once I'm done, I can go back to the course and now we can have a look at the second example. So I've completed the first one. Let's have a look at the second one. This one here is basically the same, uh, but it has a little bit more to it. It has been like the appearance has been um, improved a little bit. So for example, instead of a normal text um, heading, we have this background image here and the it has been, been made to, to look a little bit like a header, which looks a little nicer. And um, we've got a little formatting going on here. And as I've just refreshed the page, so you can see again, there was a little animation. So it, it animates in if you if you uh, set that up. And here, instead of just heading some text, I've used an accordion from H5P. So you can interact with that topic of the session. Um, very simple interaction, but still it's, it's a relevant one, um, which, which can be used easily and successfully. And then I've got another paragraph, some text. I can mark this as done, and then I can move to the next section, which again includes some text and uh, the crosswords um, content type here from H5P. I'm not going to like answer that. You know how that works. Um, it, it's fully incorporated in here, so I can of course use that, and I will get the feedback. Then I've got another paragraph here. I can mark it as done, and then last but not least, I get the same summary. Um, but the big difference is that it's just a little, looks a little nicer and you can go way, way farther with that. So you can you can like style all of them. You can animate all of them in. You can add background information. You can add, add images. I just wanted to have a very simple example at first um, so that we can see how it works. Um, let me answer the summary again. So uh, blueberries are edible round berries and they turn blue and ripening. Everybody knows that now. And once I hit mark is done, I get access uh, to the what we call the outro. Um, the outro is nothing else than just a, an image. Um, and it indicates that you have reached the end of the chapter and therefore you have completed this activity. So you can see above here, there's a little green progress bar showing up, which tells me that I've successfully completed all three chapters. And now I can again use the, um, the call to actions here to either go to the next learning nugget or to go back to the course. I just want to show you immediately the next learning nugget. Um, so let's click this one here. And again, similar thing that like we had last time. Um, there's a heading again, some text, a memory game here. I can mark the chapter as complete. Then it's marked as complete here in the progress bar. Um, I can also integrate a course presentation, which is a really nice, nice element type and works really well on mobile too, because um, usually in content design, you have this scrolling interaction type, like you scroll through content and the course presentation swipes sidewise. And that's a nice combination, just interaction wise. 
And you can include lots of things here, uh, which makes content really engaging in comparison to just reading a text or just watching a video without any interactions to it. Um, you can use that uh, for most H5P types. Um, and by most, I mean, you can add all H5P types and they will work just fine. But there's not all of them that support what we call a mandatory or obligatory H5P. So in this case here, this interactive video is set to be obligatory. So I have to complete it. Otherwise, I can't go on and proceed uh, to the next part of this content designer module. And that is one of the key elements of what Content Designer allows you to do. So first of all, you can combine different H5P content types with text, with headings into one seamless flow of content, which is scroll through. Second, um, you can make H5Ps com um, uh, mandatory, which means people have to interact and pass them in order to go on. And that is, these are the two things that we think that are necessary to incorporate H5P in a better way into your course. So I'm not going to like watch the full video and show you um, that I can click the right boxes in the quiz. I'm, I'm sure that you will believe me that this works. Feel free to try it out yourself in the demo course, which you will get access to later. Um, but um, I'm sure everybody knows how this H5P interactive video works, and that's exactly what is showing up here. So the interesting thing is how do they actually look in the background? So let's have a look at this very simple example from the very beginning. So I'm going to look at the content editor, which is the editing backend of the content designer. Uh, in the background, it looks like this. So we've got chapters. So content is the main chapter here. We only have one chapter, so not zero ones. And then we have elements in here. Each element has its own configuration, its own title, its own type. Um, there's a couple of elements. I can show you which one we have at the moment. So there's this chapter. And then we've got an H5P element. We've got a heading element. We've got a paragraph element. And we've got a rich text element so that you can like add everything that the editor, editor or any editor that you want to use can, can support. So the idea is that you use those elements and we will add more in future releases, of course, to build up your, your content. So if we look at, for example, the rich text here, this is just say an editor, like you know it, but you can add additional settings to that. So you, for example, you can add some margin or some padding to it. You can set its visibility to visible or hidden. You can give it a background image. You can give it a background color if you want to. And you can set animations to it so that it like fades in or slides in from the side. You can add a scrolling effect so that it's, it, it scrolls or it, it basically it slides in at the same speed as you scroll so that you get this nice interactive effect that it the scrolling of the user interacts with the content that flies in. And you can have some, uh, so you can set that something is hidden or, or visible on desktop, tablet, and mobile. So if you have something which maybe works great on desktop, but it doesn't work great on mobile, you can have that element showing up only on desktop and have a different one showing up on mobile, which is quite nice to, to provide content, which is hard to otherwise provide uh, for different viewports. That was the rich text example. Uh, let's have a look at an H5P example. That's even easier. You basically just add the H5P content in here. And then the only specific setting for H5P elements is the mandatory switch. So for example, this summary element is mandatory. So you need to pass it um, in order to complete this element. Um, if I had said that to know, you could just like scroll on and not interact with it. I suggest to, to be respectful of the user's time and effort. So do not make everything mandatory if, it, if it's not necessary. So just make those really mandatory that are required from your point of view to make sure that people actually do learn instead of just scrolling through the element all at once. But be, be a little considerate when, when deciding whether it's mandatory or not. Um, you have the same settings here, so you can add some margins around that or some padding. You can have a background um, if you need. You can slide that in or fade that in 
if you want. Um, we usually recommend to be um, minimalistic when it comes to um, like backgrounds or animations when it comes to H5Ps because they're, they're quite complex sometimes. So if your students don't have a very strong machine or strong smartphone, um, it, it might lag a little bit uh, because their, their client is not capable to fully power it. Um, so just be a little careful when you add all of them together uh, or of course test it uh, if you do so. For a paragraph, there's a very simple element. You basically just get a text and that is pretty much on purpose. Uh, the idea behind the paragraph element is that you avoid that your teachers can add too much formatting. Um, while a little formatting usually is, is good and helpful, um, I've seen so many courses where really teachers went nuts adding like bold and underlined and colors and spaces and whatever. And this paragraph element has the attention to keep formatting to a reasonable, realistic, level, which actually makes sense and does not distract from the content. So while you can set alignment, vertical and horizontal, and you can add a background, uh, the idea of this element is really to make sure that the actual text is, is, is legible and easy to read, and it's, it's not destroyed or made hard to read by adding too much formatting. You can add formatting if you use, if you use the editor, of course, um, but the idea is to hopefully most of the time use the paragraph only. In the second example, let's switch to the second one here. You can see that I've added chapters. So I've got the introduction chapter here. I've got the crosswords chapter, the summary chapter, and then last but not least, the outro. In the crosswords, for example, I've got a heading. Let's have a look at that. That's just the text of the heading. I can say whether it's a heading of type H2, a main heading, or H3, a subheading. So make it bigger or smaller. You can style it um, using your theme if you want to. Uh, you can add a URL if you want to jump using the heading to some other place. So if you want to use it as a call to action, for example. And then you can also add the, uh, the same settings to the heading element like you did for, for example, a paragraph. Some, some margin here, some padding here, maybe a background image to make it look a little nicer, maybe a little gradient on top of that, uh, or, or an entrance animation. So I could, for example, set that to fade in here. And then if we look at the content again, um, this is the element that we just looked at. It fades in, has a text, it has some space around it, and um, it just makes the content look a lot nicer without a lot of effort. Um, and, and achieving something like this is actually quite hard without Content Designer. It's, it's pretty much impossible um, without knowing to, how to code in the normal editor, but it's actually quite easy to do so with Content Designer. One last thing here to, to, to notice, um, and that is the outro element. So I've added a nice image here um, just to, to like really indicate that somebody has finished a chapter and that they moved all to the end and therefore have completed the activity. Everybody likes something like that. Can be a JPEG, uh, but can also be um, a GIF or, or something else. So you can also do something animated here. Um, if you want to just grab something from, from like, like I did from Shutterstock or any other stock portal of your choice uh, to grab something which really like maybe, maybe a little um, firework or or something with like a box which pops up and then has a thumb up, thumbs up or something like that. And then you can define where the primary button and the secondary button should go to. Give it a label, give it URL, and that way you can control the flow. So somebody can start with a con uh, content design activity and then you can they can choose whether they go back to the course, for example, and it would be this one here or whether they should directly jump to the next content designer activity or any activity or any link really. So you can really use that to, to, to control where somebody is supposed to go next. If you add this to a normal designer course, uh, we think it already looks quite nice and is, is, is a pleasure to, to learn with and to edit. 
Um, but I wanted to show you um, one, th one example, which is um, like really showing off its, its strength um, in our opinion. So in order to do so, um, let's jump to a different course and actually let's, let's use a user for that um, so that I can show you how it looks for the user. In this case, um, we're looking at a course which has been built using our Level Maps plugin, which is a course format. So it controls and lays out a course and the main course pages and section pages. And the content design activity has really been built with this in mind. It can be used in any normal course and it works really nice, uh, but it, it truly shines uh, when used in the learning world. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So let's go to the introduction section, to the first section of this course, and let's have a look at, at this activity. So in level maps, should you not know that, um, every section is represented by a background image and every activity is represented by an image. So, so this year is max, and that's a content designer activity. And I, when I click on that, the content designer activity opens in a pop-up so that I can stay in, on the same page. I don't have a reload. I don't have to, I don't lose the, the, uh, the context. I can just start reading and interacting with the content designer activity right away. So if I click mark is done, I get a little H5P element here. So I'm supposed to find Max's letter, which is here. And once I've done so, I can continue to read his letter and get to know him. Um, we've actually incorporated a little gamification here too. So here's a little stash item, which I can collect to then further on exchange that in the trade center to a chip, which will then allow me to move to the next section. But that's the story for a different webinar series. We're going to host a webinar series called Game On, which is all about gamification. So if you're interested in gamification, be sure to, to sign up for that one. And so then I can continue to interact with it. And here's the outro image, uh, which in this case says, congratulations, solved the first task, and you now received some competence points. And if I click back, I can now go to the next part in this, in this level, uh, which is the bird in this case, which tells me something about the global toy industry. I can reveal the information here. I can go to the next chapter can pick up some stash element. I can read some more. And then I have completed the activity and therefore get some additional competence points. Um, and that's, that's all the same logic. Um, like you can add as many elements in there that you want. Content designer is theoretically capable to handle lots of chapters, but we wouldn't really recommend it. Like something like two to four, maybe three to, to four is, from our point of view, ideal. It's really meant to be used for nuggets. So, so um, with a micro learning strategy in mind. So don't like put lots of text and lots of images and lots of stuff in there. It's really meant to be one little nugget. Uh, which might be like like five or six scroll pages or viewports long, um, with maybe two, three, four interactions, which is a nice consumable bit, which is easy to consume and to learn and and remember later on. Um, so that's the let's say that's a realistic example how we imagine it to look. Um, before we move to the Q and A section, I wanted to show you one more thing, and that is. If I go back to my course here, sorry for the clicking. So go back to the content directions here. Um, that the content designer activity was displayed in a modal is not only possible in level maps, it's also possible if you use our designer course format. So if you turn on display activities in the pop up and save that, then the content designer activities will also open in one of those modals. So if you want to have the same experience that you want your students to remain in the same context without a page reload, uh, without always like being on different pages, uh, which is especially um, um, helpful for, for courses which have, which should be very intuitive and very easy to consume and very easy to navigate. 
uh, be sure to check out uh, Content Designer in combination with Designer, the de Designer course format, and, um, and use the Content Designer for the content and uh, use other things like maybe um, the self evaluation um, too, because that works uh, nicely in the model too. Not all activities work there, like a forum and an assignment don't work because they have too many pages, um, but the choice works, the page works, the book works, content designer works, video time works. So there's lots of activities that actually do work. Um, just be a little conscious of that, that you need to check whether they work or not. Um, but it's a really nice way to, to put together a course which looks more modern and more intuitive and, and smoother than many Moodle courses. Mm -hmm.